Yep, Charlemagne the God. Uh, my guy Andrew Schultz is uh, running around the globe right now, um, but he'll be back next week. But today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites to the online stores, the marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag-and-drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Now let's start the show. Man, I got to say something, man. Look at God because uh, these three individuals that we have in here today, I didn't even know that they was going to be on the show this week, you know, uh, but they in town. So why not? Uh, the ghetto legends themselves, you DC the Young way. Fly, Chico Bean. Carlos Miller, collectively known as the 85 South Show, fresh off a number one trending show on Netflix. Number one trending, knocked off Black Mirror, number one trending in America. I'm going to go get that tatted. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. 85 South. Number Knocking one. off Number Black one. Mirror. Black Knocking Mirror. off Black Mirror. That's their yeah. flagship show. Yeah. I mean, it's a big show. Black Mirror is a huge show. Yeah. I told you. I mean, it don't matter who. I, I don't want to say knock off because, mm -hmm. you know, I salute everybody and, and you know, mm -hmm. in all their endeavors. But it's like, this is what happens when you allow people to to create for real. You know what I'm saying? It's new to the the people who we didn't expect to be watching us or who we never thought was watching us. But we've been number one to all the 85 percent. Exactly. Oh yeah, I tell people if you just uh you if you just getting hip to the 85 South Show, then you definitely uh culturally clueless. I told y'all I was in Cannes, France, at Cannes Lions with all the advertisers and all the corporations, and when that shit came out that y'all went number one. It was either two reactions. People were like, oh, shit, congratulations, 85 South been out here cooking. Or number two is, who is the 85 South showing? Why don't mm -hmm. we know about them? Mm -hmm. yeah, Come on in, white people in your dollars. <laughs> I yeah. love that. All I, the way. I want people to, to watch the show and be like, how did I not know? Why am I out the loop? Why didn't nobody tell me? Yeah. I All love when, when people first discover the show, man. And salute to your vision, man, because, you know, you've always been tapped into what we do in our talents and always have used your platform to give us a bigger platform to step up to and show the world what it is that we do. So got to salute to you, man, because, you, you know, we first got kicked off, man. You was one of the first that saw it and was like, man, I want to be a part of what y'all got going on. So, you know, what I mean, now that the world is starting to realize that you could take some of the credit of me and like, man, I've been new. You know what I mean? I've been <laughs> plugged into what them niggas got going on. So, man, thank you. That's that's why I wanted Chad to sit in here, man, because I think, you know, people talk to y'all about a bunch of stuff all the time. Who is Chad to y'all, first of all? A fucking Chad, nuisance. a whole ass nigga. A I nuisance. Know. <laughs> no, that's our my brother, nigga, man. man. Partner, that's my partner right there. That's man. my dog, man. I've been knowing Chad since he was about 17, man. Right? Yeah, I met Chad. Chad, one of the first people. Chad and Clayton English, one of the first. They the first couple yeah, people awesome. that I met when I moved to Atlanta. We used to work together. Okay. My dog, man. And then it's like, I seen him go from just slacker to the most, you know what I mean? Dedicated, detailed business, man. It's the craziest transition that I have ever seen. She go, what, she go what? get eat in here if you want to. I'm not going to eat in the mic. It's I'm going to turn the it's, mic it's up. For them. God okay, damn, Taylor. ma'am. Taylor just doing her job. I know, Taylor, recording? but Taylor. I'm recording yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, so, I mean. yeah, but it's all good. I ain't about yeah. to chew in the mic. I ain't no seed, but you ain't say nothing. <laughs> That's why they covered up. There's a lot of bad breath motherfuckers been on here. Yes, they nah. have. You were asking about Chad, though, man. Chad handled all the details, man. He, right. he, don't, he don't mind being on them calls and going to them lunches and, you know, do, doing that 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 dog and pony show with with the corporate people, so that's what that's his his role. He makes sure everything is streamlined, handle all the details of you know the day to day operations of the eighty five South Show. That's good because that's what I wanted to talk to y'all about today, man. The business of the eighty five South Show because I don't think people realize you know how much y'all are doing on the business sense. People watch y'all cultural impact, so I want to get into a lot of that today. But for people who who don't know. And, and and they just getting on to y'all because of the Netflix special going number one. Who who is the eighty five South Show? And I want I, I want an answer from each one of y'all because I know it's probably different from each one of y'all. What you got, Fly? Man. What y'all look, Chad? What you got? Who uh, is the eighty five South Show, Chad? It's a it's a media company uh, that produces across all of the platforms to create uh, without any inhibition. Mm. You know, because we've all tried Hollywood. I've tried it from the corporate side, trying to work for people. And they've also tried it from the talent side. And, you know, at some point, you just want your own freedom. Mm -hmm. so that's, and it's like with the Southern, you know, 
the Southern flair for it. DC? I feel like the hood always wanted a superhero. Mm. And we ain't never really, like, you know, you watch Batman, watch all of them, and you like, damn. You even watch the, uh, the other one, like Aquaman, you like, they even went in the water. <laughs> Before they came to the hood. Right. Like, you know, it's like, who the hell is going to come over here, speak for us, talk for us, and not only that, be for us? And I feel like 85 South is like a collection of, it's like Captain Planet. Mm -hmm. Of just every hood, every, not only just hood, every motherfucker who done been through something and overcame something and, and, and understand and have some type of humility is we represent them. Mm -hmm. Not saying the bottom of the barrel, but people who always get overlooked. Mm -hmm. The underdog. Mm -hmm. The motherfucker who may not have the opportunity to have this outlet or this position, but they make the best out of everything that they come across. Mm -hmm. So we like a a big Captain Planet for every last one of those people around the world because when we go do our shows, these are the type of people we bring out. These are the type of people. We, we got some executives in there, but we got, and we got some people that's in there that looking crazy, but it's mm -hmm. like the, the everyday 85 percenters, that's what we do it for, man. So it's like 85 South Show is Literally, like, I go to superhero. Chico? 85 South is a one-on-one. It's innovation. It's, it's, you know, it's something that's never been done before. When you see the legends, the greats, tell us that, man, y'all doing something that's never been done before, that really puts it in perspective what it is that we're accomplishing over here because, you know, you've never seen three people who are individual stars be able to come together and share the spotlight. And it wasn't that it couldn't have been done. They just never did it. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we chose to do it has created a whole nother lane of comedy that didn't exist before we started to do it the way that we do it. I mean, you've had improv troops. You've had, you know, the 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 country guys that went on tour and together and all of that. But you've never seen three black entertainers get on stage together and do it the way that we've done it. Because for some reason throughout time, they've always had that me, me, me mentality, and I got to be the only one, and I got to be the man. So this is something that has created a lane of comedy that didn't exist for our people. And I think that, you know, it's innovative and it's one-on-one -on -one in that regard because now from what you see us do, you're going to be able to see a whole nother type of comedian and type of comedy come out. And the fact that we've been able to do it so consistently and, you know, to be able to give it to people the way that we've given it to them, We've now went number one on the biggest streaming platform. So now you know that there's value in this style of comedy. Before, Absolutely. you don't have anything to compare it to because you can't compare it to something that has never been done before. But now you have a gauge to be able to compare what we do to what we've done, if you will. So I think that it's, it's innovative in, a, in that regard. And it's a one on one until, you know, we continue to open and break down these <coughs> doors for people to come behind us and, you know. Like you said, they're going to be talking about what we're doing for years to come. And I don't even think people recognize it. But now that we've gone number one on Netflix, I think the conversation is going to start a little bit more. So I just think, you know, the best way to explain it is the 85 South Show is a one-on-one. -on -one. Carlos, who's the 85 South Show to you? The 85 South Show is the Avengers mm. of, of entertainment because you get to see us do so many things. And I always think about that scene where the Avengers where it's just total chaos and motherfuckers flying by, doing backflips and jumping off of shit. I think that's the that's the best way to describe it. It's a family environment. Everybody's a, a mutant. They got multiple talents that they bring into the table every time we do something. Um, from doing Netflix to hosting the BET Awards, man, it's just... It's Two times. Yeah, it's a, it's a range of talent over here. DC, sing, dance, do backflips, skate. Chico is going to come up with the coldest, dopest, purplest, pinkest, uh, smoothest, silkiest uh, fabrics in America. Crazy. It's like, it's just <laughs> crazy. To, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, it's just crazy to see the type of talents that you get to be around. And then you get guys like Chad who can, who can do the, who can do the, the, the four hour conference calls. And then you got guys like, like Joe and Kat, Kat who just yeah. bringing all these different weapons to the table that's just at our disposal. And that's why we're able to cover so much ground because it's not just the talent is dope. We surrounded by people who are dope as hell at whatever they do from the dude rolling the blunt to the motherfuckers setting up the camera to the mm -hmm. drivers, to the people booking the travel. Like we have cultivated our village to have the coldest people around us. And, and y'all not just three people <clears throat> getting in front of microphones talking. You know what I mean? That's what a lot of people, when they, when they see podcasts, that's what they think, right? All of y'all come from a stand-up comedy background. Right. What made y'all choose stand-up comedy? 
Oh, bro. I'm talking about initially, like when you y'all, don't get to choose to be a stand up. No, don't choose. It's mm. kind of like an affliction. Mm. It's like well, even when you dead ass serious and people still laugh at you, it's like, oh, you must be one of those guys. That's the type of affliction you got. You are you a comedian. Mm-hmm. Even when you dead ass serious, people think it's funny. Mm-hmm. So it's like just to be around guys like DC and Chico and, and Clayton English and Nav and Moneybag Mafia and just like. These guys are, even in their most serious moments, they still hilarious humans mm-hmm. right. in any situation. Like, we didn't laugh at the most inappropriate shit. And it's like, you don't get to choose that because you don't get to practice that. Being a comedian is naturally in you. I feel like every black family got that one comedian in the family that never did comedy before. Mm-hmm. We just the ones from our family that stood and took that chance and went on stage with it. How did y'all know how to go on stage, though? Especially somebody like you, DC, because they all, you know, they, they I like, mean, they, my, my manager at the time wanted some money. So that's how I got, <laughs> that's how I got it. And I looked up, I was like, you got the show at 9 o'clock. I was like, 9 o'clock tonight? And before you know it, but I had to break the ice, though. That's the only thing I can say. I'm glad they did and forced me mm-hmm. to do, you know what I'm saying? And once I did break the ice, it was no more, you don't have to force me to do this. It's now it's like, I broke the ice and it was like, ooh, I got the, that's the hardest part about stand up is when you gonna ever go on stage. You was already hot on social media. That that, that's just social media. Yeah, Damn, yeah. a phone. Yeah. This is real life in real time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The shit you say on the net ain't formulated into a joke. It's just some funny shit you said. Mm-hmm. Now, this is where you have to perfect your craft. And once I broke down the ice and I was like, you know what? It's time for me to find out what is a comedian, how to be a comedian, and what can I do with all my other attributes. I cannot bring them and enhance me being a comedian. And once I really took it serious, it was like, oh, I've been doing it. Mm-hmm. I just had to be a professional. Chico, when you when you when you first took on took on that stage, uh, when I graduated from college, I graduated from West Salem State and was trying to figure out what I was going to do with myself. And um, you know, a friend of mine named Jerome, who was my partner at, at the time, you know, what I'm saying we was doing everything as far as hosting the step shows and the the, the pageants and all that stuff for the school and um. He was like, you should try comedy. And mind you, I've been public speaking my whole life. I've been in front of people talking, but mm-hmm. comedy was never something that I thought to do. I was always a fan and I loved the art of it, but I never thought to do it. And then even in me hosting the shows at the school, the laughs that I would get, I just, you know, I didn't attribute it to being a stand up comedian. I just thought I was good at hosting stuff. So, uh, you know, it was an open mic at the Comedy Zone in Greensboro. Every first and second Thursday of the month, I went the first Thursday, everybody bombed. I was like, well, shit, I can at least do this bad. And I went back <laughs> the next week and went up and did four minutes. And after I did them four minutes, it's like a movie. When I came off the stage and my feet hit the floor, I was like, oh, shit, this is what I'm supposed to be yeah, doing. Life changed. Yeah, this is what I'm supposed to mm-hmm. This is it. This is what I'm supposed you. to be doing. It's like if I felt it like this is my calling. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is the way that I'm supposed to you know, impact the world. And I felt it even as an open mic of my first time doing four minutes on stage. And in my mind, I kill. You really can't kill in four minutes, but Especially I did. Especially your first time. Yeah. Right, and in right. my mind, I just fucked these people up in here. I'm the but, next Eddie Murphy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but at the same time. Not me. Man, I was like, I need work. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you bombed? I didn't bomb. They were just looking at me, which is worse than booze. Because you said yesterday, yeah. at least people got the energy to boo you. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. When people are, they just looking at you. Boy, you doing bad, bad. And I had one person <laughs> laughing, but he was drunk. He was like, ah. <laughs> but I was like, man, now nah, it's I, like I know I'm doing bad. But he like, no, nah, you, you. He was the only person that really gave me motivation. He yeah. was like, no, nah, you find it, but you just got to find to perfect it. And yeah. once I perfected, it was like, oh, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. When you took that stage, love. When did um first time the very first time that I got on stage to do anything creative? It was probably. You know, outside of school shit, I'm talking about like as an adult, I started off doing improv with this improv troupe. And in between our sets, like while they was, you know, switching out for the games or whatever, somebody got to go out there and talk some shit, at least to the games is set up. So I used to take those little spots and just go out and just keep the crowd warmed up and just keep talking shit. So what ended up happening is between those sets after, you know, a season of doing that, I actually talked to the dude who owned the club and I was like, I let him get, he let me get the stage by myself. And I threw my first show completely by myself and went on there. And it's like, I did the show and that feeling, like I said, it just, that first little time, it just consumed my life and it just changed everything. It's just, 
I was just like fighting to get back on stage. But, you know, it was just one of those things where it took a while to come into. But that shit changed everything. That first time, that first laugh, that feeling of you just doing five minutes on stage, but this shit had you up all night. You can't go to bed. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. adrenaline still pumping. Like, I still get that feeling every time it's a show day. Did y'all know each other in those comedy clubs when y'all was? I knew Chico first. I knew knew Carlos because I was a fan. Okay. Did y'all interact then, or y'all? Mm-hmm. Were one, I didn't. I was already. I was a fan of him, mm-hmm. and I didn't know he he fucked with my comedy until I saw a little clip on Vine. Somebody asked him, and he said my name as soon as he Brother did Club. it. Exactly. As mm-hmm. soon as he said that shit, I put like I pulled up on him. As soon as I saw it, because I knew the guys that was managing him, mm-hmm. and they was like, "Man, DC, he'll be down here this evening." I'm, I'm pulling up. I fuck with that young dude because mm-hmm. I used to watch all his. Uh, you know, he used to get on there and do like morning motivation shit mm-hmm. back mm-hmm. when he was smoking blunts heavy. He would get on there every morning and smoke a blunt, say a little, you know, half positive, half funny shit. So I always fucked with him on that. I still ask him now why he don't do that shit. There's a lot of shit. I became a <laughs> fan of him through his social media work. But I knew Chico from actually pulling up them your partners. I know that nigga. Who that nigga? Yeah. I fuck with them. All right, so we all partners and shit like that. So it all started organically of us organically fucking with each other's style and humor and shit like that. But whose idea was the 85 South Show? I remember Carlos hitting me saying he wanted to start a podcast. Yeah. And I feel like he said DC was going to be a part of it. Most definitely. But that, like it started, We did. I didn't know how to formulate the mm-hmm. shit. Like me and Chad, and Joe and Kat and shit, I think Ryan, we we were trying to find a, find the sauce to put this shit together. Mm-hmm. Like we had DJ Mars, some cute little chick who was just she was so lively off camera. Like she'll be perfect. Mm-hmm. Man, we turned the camera on. She turned stone. <laughs> Great goggles. Oh, so that was the first like, iteration. She literally yeah, couldn't formulate a sentence. She couldn't move. Mm-hmm. And we we were shooting like a uh, what they call it, air checks. We were shooting a radio show. Mm-hmm. Cause we didn't we didn't know what a podcast was, um, and we tried to go all around the city just to get somebody local to pick it up, and they wasn't really feeling it. So that's when Los was saying he kept saying the word podcast, so we had to go Google what an actual podcast was. And that's mm-hmm. still to this day. That's why I always be like, yeah. "This podcast is for people who don't know." Yeah. Podcast. We, we was like, podcast. internet radio was a thing too, but we didn't really understand what that was either. So we just started following whatever a podcast was, and then in between those couple of little you know studio sessions. That's when that shit came out that he said. Mm-hmm. And then we linked up one day in December. Yep. Right at the end of December, we recorded a couple of episodes. And then we dropped that shit on Christmas 2015 yep. and just been on it ever since. It was just you and D.C. at the time. At, the, at first, because yeah. Chico don't live in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, live, I don't live in Atlanta, but I, I mean, in, in, in Atlanta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was I was there. calling in, like, talking shit like, oh, you niggas just think you're going to start some shit without yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. I was calling in like, y'all niggas better tell me where the studio is. So I was just calling in from where I was at, you know what I mean, making sure that, you know what I mean, just the to uh, uh, ingratiate myself with what was going on, but also just to, you know, bring a different element to, you know, what was going on. Because every time they would record, I would call and cuss them out and be like, man, we can make it that. <laughs> right, you know what I mean? Because they'll tell you, anytime I'm not on camera or doing any work, she, you pull up at my house, I'm yeah. probably watching media. I just, yeah. that's all I fucking do is just watch media, good shit, bad shit. I remember I mm-hmm. uh, used to watch a lot of Tax Stone, yeah. Lord Tax- Sear, Rude, Rude Jude, um, uh, brilliant idiots, shit. Breakfast Club. Yeah. Um, I always was. I just like to listen to shit. Like mm-hmm. I, I used me and Chico for the longest before we got to this level of our career. We preferred to drive to shows. Mm-hmm. We would do the show and just you know anything we under six hours, eight hours. Yeah, yeah. anything yeah. six to eight hours. We going home right after that right show. After the show. So it was always like a need <laughs> to. Yeah, we, it was like people would offer us flights and be like, well, no, yeah. we driving. Mm-hmm. Because we know as soon as we get off this stage at 10 o'clock, we head it straight back to the crib. Right. Mm-hmm. Or whatever time it is, we might chop it up for an hour or so, but we driving. And it's like, you can only listen to so much music. So that's when I started really getting heavy onto the, the media and the podcast and the shit like that. I wanted to ask y'all about that because coming from a stand-up background, what made y'all you know, know y'all need to get into media? How did you know like that? this was the platform that would take y'all to another level? A podcast or something in the audio space? Well, I know... When, when when we first started, what stuck out, Carlos was like, just, just, just it's a podcast. And everybody, what's a podcast? You know, it's like radio. It's mm-hmm. like, 
undetected radio. Without it's the music. uncensored radio. <laughs> yeah. It's it's range. Mm-hmm. It's just like radio, but we got the free range to say whatever and do whatever. He like, you can practice on your your timing, your punches, and you can you're constantly talking. Mm. So just getting used to hearing your I, voice on the I mic. I never once I started, I now I believe in whatever I say, I ain't scared to say it. Mm. And and it came from this podcast. So I'm like, nigga, even on stage to this day, if I want to say it, I'm going to say it because I've been trained and conditioning myself from this podcast. And we never knew what a podcast was. You know what I'm saying? And they have three comedians to do radio because it's technically radio. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of like I run it, but it's, it's a beautiful thing at the same time. Yeah, it'd be too much to be a radio show we, to have we, three comedians. We keep it. We, we, and it's uncensored and we can really say what the fuck we've. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. we said we fuck it up. I don't know. It's a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. yeah. I make sure that breath clear. My yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we can really say what we want to say, but also formulate and condition our craft at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I and and it also got me better on stage. Yeah. How did you know, Loth? How did I know? And this is gonna be the platform to take y'all to another level. You and Chad, when y'all because it was there, uh, it was already there. We just had to fine tune it and find the right elements to do it. Because even like you said, even the shit we did in the beginning wasn't terrible. It just wasn't, it wasn't packaged, right? right? We didn't have the right elements together. And I was like, I don't have to go find nobody. I can bring my friends in here. I know guys who would be perfect for this. Like, just by the conversations that we have off camera, the mm-hmm. shit that we talk about, the scenarios that, like, we missing shows or pulling up late. You know, there's so much shit that goes with that. So I just knew that once we got the right people with the right flow, <clears throat> right timing, it was going to take off. Did, did it, did it kind of formulate itself? Because like you yes. said, Chico was calling in. And everything like, nah, came we, in. Oh, we yeah, never yeah, we yeah. never like denied nothing. Mm-hmm. We allowed everything to play out and what it was. And we was just like accepted to like, this what it is. Mm-hmm. This, okay, we're going to rock with this. This what's going on, we're going to rock with this. All right, bet. We're going to run with that and we're going to formulate that. And before you know it, we all looking at each other and we're like, this the one. This it? This is it. Yeah, this the this one. Shit. Uh-huh. I yeah, feel this, good about this. How you feel? Yeah, I, I mean, feel great. Yeah, yeah, I remember me and Chad had that conversation. I don't remember where, where we was at, but we was we had just done did some show somewhere, one of them ones where we still was getting paid in paper bags yeah, and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, me and Chad was talking to him after the show and was like, Man, this this the yeah. this the this the formula right here. This it. This the one. How do you know, Chad? Man, um, to be real, I used to work for Steve Harvey, so I, tell I remember people, oh, that was like a. He never told nobody. That was, <laughs> that was like a. That was like a masterclass in how to leverage uh, your talent and build a bunch of business around it. So what I would tell them was, you know, it's not that you know you can argue your favorite comedians from the '90s all day, but what Steve did was he took the business route first, mm-hmm. and then he leveraged the Steve Harvey Radio Network to sell television, to sell books, to sell. Audio to sell bacon. out shows. Bacon. <laughs> bacon. He was selling bacon at one point. Yeah. Um, and then uh, he would tell us all the time, Steve Harvey, the comedian, the 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 business conversations changed once he became Steve Harvey, the co-founder, Steve Harvey, the executive producer. So even when we built this business, we all came in as co-founders, all came in as executive producers and partners. So it's just a different conversation. It just opens up different doors. So we knew if we, if, if we leveraged the podcast as the rocket ship, It'll put us up here and we can leverage that for all the other, you know, opportunities that we can create from there. See, well, that's it, a full circle joint, though, because mm-hmm. it's like, how can you imagine, like, one of my closest partners work with one of the biggest talents in my field. Mm-hmm. And he's been over there doing big business for them, right. closing deals and all of that shit. So it's like, we ain't on that level, but we going to that level. Absolutely. Right. So right. we can meet in the middle and, and do business. Yeah. You got the experience of... This big shit, mm-hmm. but let's build our own shit. It ain't it ain't gonna be as complicated or as complex, but eventually we can have an empire too. Yeah. And and you know he's just speaking to Steve in particular. He's somebody who has, you know, gave us that that ability to be able to know that what we're doing is on that level because right. you know it's no different than you. You know you don't have to let a person know it. They don't, opportunity don't always come with a check. Sometimes it just comes with, hey, man, I see you. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? It's just a, being in that vantage point of certain people. And once we got that confirmation throughout time, it's been different confirmations. But just this past time that we went to Steve's radio show and he was like, man, y'all doing some shit. I, and I'm talking about it with all of these different people, all of these legendary comedians. 
And we like, man, we don't know how them niggas is doing this shit. And they wanted to try. And they wanted to, they <laughs> always yeah. wanted to do it. And they always wanted to try. But at, it's the same that it goes from, man, what them niggas doing to, I don't know what them niggas doing. Yeah. Like, that's a hell of a transition because those same people that are, you know, and he's honest enough to tell us that, man, I ain't think this shit was going to work when y'all first started doing it. Right. So now it's like, man, how do y'all do it? To get to that point, that transition, that transitional period, like that's something that lets us know that, like I said, we're doing some shit that's never been done before. And to pick back up off what Chico said is, is back then it was more so me, 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 my, 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 my shine, my shine. Mm-hmm. Niggas scared that somebody else is who's a great comedian to come take the people who fought because at that time we had no social media because who could follow me and then follow you. Oh, he can follow anybody he like, but everybody that's in that crowd, nigga, these my people that I brought right, out. Right. That's how they were looking at them. Them, 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 my money. Now it's to the point where it's like, we, we don't care about that. We we all know that everybody got their special powers, but this is a unit thing. And it feels great when you can do this and be this powerful with your friends and with your brothers. And it's like, yeah, everybody got their own special, unique power skills, but it's like, nigga, it's the principle that we doing it together. It's always gonna be better than what we do by ourselves. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I watch y'all and y'all do it so effortless, effortlessly with no ego whatsoever. When y'all do have disagreements, how do y'all handle it? We so don't like have brothers. no disagreements like that. It be if you know just little petty disagreements mm-hmm. like, yeah. man, that is my lighter. Right. But we ain't never had no <laughs> fallout. Like, man, y'all cut that shit out. Right, right. Uh-huh. It's, it's never no falling out. But you know, we brothers. Right, right, right. We brothers. We grown men. It's testosterone. wrong. But it's 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 never no physical altercation. It's all right, well, I don't understand it. Help me understand it how you understand it. Right. And then we sit down as a group and as a unit and be like, look, this is what's going on. I was like, all right, all right, all right. Well, how about this? How about mm-hmm. this? How you feel? Yeah. Okay, look, we'll do it like this so you can feel good. Just to show you, bro, we want to make sure everybody is comfortable at all times because we, first of all, we are not breaking up. Mm-hmm. I don't give it. 2023. 2085, we're going to still be doing this. Right. It don't, we're <laughs> not going nowhere. It's never going to be a time where... Somebody gonna get too big and it won't be the 85 side. In 2085, y'all should make all y'all money for real. I mean, <laughs> 2085, yeah. That's yeah. y'all, yeah. I mean, ain't yeah. no no 85 side without you know the 85 man. side. I'm 111 <laughs> years old. Yeah, oh, right, you know <laughs> what I mean? All the way, but, you know, those ki- types of conversations, it's, it's different. You know, I always say, you know, coming from the environment that I come from, you can tell who really fuck with each other, who don't. Right. You know what I mean? Some Hold people. Up, before, I gotta say it. I told Chico before we recorded any fucking thing. I said, bro, if we do anything, it's going to work. He said, why? I said, because in this industry, the comedy world, there ain't three people that you can find that authentically fuck with each other right. outside of some money. I right. told him that. Yeah, he definitely did. And that's and you when you think about it from that perspective, coming from the type of environments that we come from, you know when niggas fuck with you and when you don't. Some motherfuckers are just sitting around waiting to have a problem. And waiting to beef and waiting to say something disrespectful. That's not the element amongst us. We love each other. So if it's Facts. anything that we don't agree upon, it's something that happens right then, right, right. there. And we are able to sit down no matter if we got to sit down for three and a half hours and talk about it. We're going to do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's not going to be something that and we're not the type of people that are going to express outside, inside issues outside. Mm-hmm. Some shit stay in the house. Right. You know what I mean? Some things don't go outside the door. No matter how we can get, we can be yelling at each other about some shit or mad about some shit amongst each other, but you ain't gonna know about it right. because it's our business, because that's love. But if we ain't really fuck with each other, then you'll see a motherfucker, yeah, man, you already <laughs> know, man. <laughs> <laughs> nigga ain't tagging yeah, me and you know shit. You know, you yeah. think nigga love you, man, but, look, but though, you the, know him. The crazy part about it, and I just thought about this when you spoke, I, to be honest, if you even look at our company, it's rarely that everybody's from the same spot. We got a group of people that's from different states. He's from Mississippi. He's from D.C. Mm-hmm. I'm from Atlanta. From New Orleans. From California. Mm-hmm. We ain't grow up with each other. Mm-hmm. We trust each other. That's the major point. Not only do we trust each other, we trust each other's vision. Mm-hmm. Right. We trust each other's dreams because you may have a vision that can impact every last one of our vision. That's really where the 85 South show really brent from. It came from somebody having the vision. And once we added to the vision, now we saw what he see 
or saw what they see. Now let's add what we see. Mm-hmm. So that's all the 85 South doing. It's a collective of a different lot of uh, different people that's adding vision to one main vision. And we share the will. Yeah, when I look at y'all, man, it's like Wu-Tang, right? Because it, it ain't just the three of y'all. It's, it's, you got Clayton English, you got Nav Green, you got Money Back, Mafia. Four Minds. Four Minds. Was that the initial vision to bring all of those people in? Yes, because all those people that you named, they bring something to the table that we don't bring. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, everybody, like you said, everybody got their own weapons, their own talents, and they individuals. So it's like, we want, we, we fans too. We still love this entertainment industry right. is still new to us. It's still like exciting. So to see these people come up and just know that, yeah, come on, do this. We ain't got to do, we can't take credit for nobody's talent. Right. All we can do is put you on this platform in front of these yeah, 85 the percenters that love us. Mm-hmm. If they love us they and love we love us. you, they going to love you too. Facts. I mean, we didn't all remember, but the thing is we'd have been doing that from the jump. Like that's something that, you know, even if you look at like me coming out of when I started in North Carolina with the freestyle funny comedy show, an improv troupe I started with, like all of them except for one of my partners then got on wilding out because of what we did in that environment. Oh, yeah, B Dot Darren, B Dot Darren, right. Burp, you know, all of them were cast members because, you know, they got to a point where they understood that, okay, if I show up and do what it is that I know I can do, mm-hmm. I know that when he's there, he's doing everything he's supposed to do to make the environment curated for somebody like me. Mm-hmm. And he's not going to stand in the way and be like, ah, nigga, it's, right. it's my shine. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we've always been that way. Like in everything that we do, all of our partners have at least got an audition, if not been on the show Facts. because of what we've done. Facts. And this is the first opportunity that we got. And like you said, most motherfuckers is like, nigga, my time to shine. You Back. niggas stand behind me and then, you know what I mean? But we've never been like that. So once we created our own platform, that's who we are anyway. Come on, Slim. Come on, all the way. Do your thing. Please do your thing. <laughs> you know, do your thing. Somebody. Chad, how do you keep all that together, man? Uh, I wish I could take a lot of credit. We got a whole, we got a, we pay some 25 plus people, you mm-hmm. know? So we got a whole crew, a whole staff that's running day to day and checking in and, uh, I think keeping it together is just making sure we set uh, the tone and the precedence of our expectations. So I called Chad about 10 times. Yeah, 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 literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chico got a thousand ideas, fly checking on money every other day. And Los want to talk 10 times a day. And Ryan's calling. I don't act make it seem like I'm checking on the money. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm helping with the money. I'm facilitating yeah, yeah, yeah. how it's going. Yeah, yeah. You know how people that fly be called the Chad about his money. No, no. no, about the money, the right, company money. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but keeping it in together is really not hard because uh, I'm dealing with people that want to be the best version of themselves every day. So I don't really get the opportunity to to not be inspired by that or not have a uh, have a precedent that's already set. So uh, it's not hard. And plus, I love this, man. It's like mm-hmm. I actually I love business. Like I'm a right. nerd for business, dog. I'm not like somebody that's frustrated about waking up at six to get the job done. You know, Let, let's I talk- enjoy it. Let's talk about some of the nerd shit for the for the next generation of okay. personalities watching, right? Like right. N- now, y'all started with audio and video, or just audio? Just audio, audio. first. Just audio first. Yeah. Just audio. Audio. First. audio. Uh, because you know that's mm-hmm. two totally different audiences. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. You might the 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 video may do a million, mm-hmm. but the audio may do six because mm-hmm. it's it's more like there mm-hmm. are places where there are certain pockets of you know this market that people don't have the opportunity to sit down and literally watch this shit. Mm-hmm. They would work in a warehouse or they drive a truck, truck, truck so right. they can listen to this yeah. shit all day on a loop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So we yeah. we once we figured out that, that these are two totally different markets, we had to do both. So when y'all decided to start saying, you know what, let's shoot the trap. Instead <sighs> of just putting it out audio wise. It might have been like a year later. Mm-hmm. Only because Fly's comedy is so physical that you have to See it. See yeah, it. Mm-hmm. you have to experience it differently. Right. And then his comedy has Los and Chico jumping in a whole nother thing. Mm-hmm. So, and then I did, you know, I was in the 90s, you watch Oprah and you're like, it's people on the couch talking, mm-hmm. you know? So we just created our version of that. So, and it also helped me because when we was doing the podcast and Los know how to talk. Yeah. He ain't, he ain't really got to do too much. He's like, he's funny. But I'm like, damn, I don't talk how he talk. And I can't try to do what he does because he do what he does. So online, the audio may sound like, well, who the hell the loud nigga is right. doing all? But if you would have saw me, 
Yeah. You would have yeah, understood right. yeah, yeah. what I was doing. So it kind of helped me even be better as a performer. And the podcast also helped me to be able to formulate and talk my joke out before I even do an action. Man, that's interesting DC said that. Because I remember when, when, I, when I used to have DC on Uncommon Sense, that's what the execs used to say. We don't understand him. <laughs> we don't understand what he's saying. And I used to be like, yo, 66% of all black people live in the South. Trust me, right. they're going to understand yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. the words that are coming out of his mouth. And right. I never understood that because I've been in the South so long. Right. So when I started going to different places, they like, huh? It wouldn't, it, it, it didn't offend me, but I used to be like, what you hunting me for if you heard what the fuck I just said? They like, bro, we ain't heard now correct word or grammar came out your goddamn mouth. And that's when I had to learn, like, I, I need to know how to enunciate, talk. Uh, en enunciate. Huh? That nigga said enunciate. <laughs> I mean, but I knew what he meant, though. Exactly. But, but you see the I, but see, that's, that's the point that I was making. It, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You said Nigga make it seem like I said it wrong, but I said it right because of my speech. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Joey I.E., man. Joey I used to work at, uh, I forgot what label Joey I.E. was at, but I remember one time I was shopping this artist from South Carolina. He said to me, can he talk? I said, what do you mean, can he talk? He said, can he talk? Like how T.I. can talk. Right. Like No, he like, cannot. No, don't ever compare nobody to T.I. That's what I'm saying. But I mean, you yourself said you had you had to overcome that coming from South Carolina, Monk's Corner, and getting on the radio. And then it was different back then because it was just the voice. You know what I mean? You was back in the Michael Bay's dinner and all that when it was straight radio. So, like, you know, having to overcome whatever those things are you know what i mean we all went through that like when we first got on at wild and out they're like well what do you what do you what do you guys do like what do you what can we expect from you what do y'all do what do you guys do like what is you what are you known for it was like man turn the cameras on like i show you what i do but just getting somebody to, res to understand it and respect it enough to give you that shot now you got to take advantage of it when you get it but People never going to understand. I'm sure the people at Netflix was like, what is this? Mm -hmm. As they were watching it and screening it, like, what is, what is this? What is, what is, what is this? I don't get it. I don't understand. I mean, it's it not, looks good. They, they should well, mean a shot well, it. but what is it? And now it's number one. And they don't care what it is after that right. point. So right. All you need is the opportunity. Like, give me the opportunity. It's like what KD say about basketball. Like, oh, you're skinny. You're so small, man. Give me the ball, blow the whistle, and i show you what I do. Because you know what? They don't have to try to persuade people to like us. They didn't understand. We're trying to persuade people that it's actually people who who rock with us. Absolutely. And they like, well, we don't understand. And now when you see it, they go, number one, it's like, you don't have to understand because in your line of work, you never are there negotiating. You just want to know how much they need to go number one again. Mm -hmm. A lot. Yeah, that's right. And it's so funny. It's because it's like, this is our company and this is our business. But even if we dropped the episode and that shit did one view, <laughs> so the fuck what? Like we don't, we're not invested to the point where this shit can break our heart. No. Like this is fun. This is what we we put this together. This is, yeah. it's not necessarily a hobby, but this is not the end of us by any means. This is this is one ninety ninth of the talents that oh, we have. You get oh, what I'm started. saying? And it's just this. That's the the fun, the best thing to me about it yeah. is that I know that we can't fail. All right, let's take a break from this great conversation with the eighty five South Show to talk about talk space. Do you think seeing a therapist or psychiatrist would be helpful, but you don't have the time to actually find one and meet with them or afford them? Try talk space. By doing everything online, Talkspace has made getting the help you want easy, accessible, and affordable, and Talkspace takes most insurance. At Talkspace.com, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a therapist who's right for you, typically within 48 hours. It's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your home. Talkspace lets you send messages to your therapist anytime, and they reply so you don't have to wait for your next season. You send messages to your therapist anytime and they reply so you don't have to wait for your next session. Talkspace can help with any specific challenges you might be facing. It's the number one online therapy platform with licensed therapists with more than 150 areas of specialization, including anxiety, depression, substance abuse, relationship issues, and much more. Talkspace is secure and private using the latest end-to-end -end bank grade encryption technology and complies with the latest HIPAA regulations. Talkspace is affordable and unlike many online therapy providers, Talkspace is in-network with most major insurers. If your plan covers Talkspace, you'll only pay a copay, typically around $25. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off of your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash idiots. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash idiots to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash idiots. 
The Brilliant Idiots this week is also brought to you by Mosin Cause, man. Thank you, Mosin Cause, for always supporting the Brilliant Idiots. You do know some is when you get to be your real self. So cool off with the only spiked lemonade that has real fruit flavor, Simply Spiked. Simply Spiked Lemonades, ready to drink. Spiked Lemonades broke the internet when they dropped four bold, refresh, refreshing flavors last summer. Get real with signature lemonade, strawberry lemonade, blueberry lemonade, and watermelon lemonade, all with the taste of real fruit juice. And by popular demand, four fan favorite peach flavors are now also part of the Simply Spiked family. Get juicy with signature peach, strawberry peach, Kiwi peach and mango peach, okay? All flavors are simply spiked or crafted with 5% ABV and 5% real fruit juice squeezed and concentrated. Summer's getting juicy. Go to drinksimplyspike.com slash idiots to find out how to get your hands on Simply Spike Lemonade and new Simply Spike Peach. That's drinksimplyspike.com slash idiots, okay? Flavored beer, naturally flavored with other natural flavors, simplyspike.com. Simply Spike Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Celebrate responsibly. Simply Spike is a trademark of the Simply Orange Juice Company. Now let's get back to the show. Uh, church announcements. Real quick, man. I just want to tell y'all, make sure you go to the andrewschultz.com to see where Andrew Schultz is going to be. Andrew Schultz has launched his tour. Uh, he's selling out everywhere. And we want to see you in some of these arenas that Schultz is selling out. So make sure you go to the andrewschultz.com uh, to see where Andrew Schultz is going to be. I want to tell y'all, to make sure to go get your tickets for the International African American Museum in Charleston, South Carolina, man. Uh, we had the grand opening last weekend. It was an amazing event. It officially opened to the public on June 27th, uh, this past Tuesday. And it's built on Gatson's Wharf. Gatson's Wharf is where they say, um, I can't remember the exact number, but it's like 50% of all enslaved, I think it's oh, 48.1% of all enslaved Africans came through Gatson's Wharf. So if you shake your family tree, from South Carolina probably going to fall out, man. So uh, go home and go to the International African American Museum. You can go get your tickets uh, at the IAAM.com website, okay? I'm doing some real special things there uh, before the year is over, and I can't wait to talk to you about them. And I also want to tell you to make sure you go out there and pre-order Invisible Generals, okay? That is one of the latest releases coming out on my book in print, Black Privilege Publishing through Simon & Schuster. It's by my guy, Doug Melville. Salute to Doug Melville. Um, Invisible Generals is the amazing true story of America's first black generals, Benjamin O. Davis Sr. and Jr., a father and son who helped integrate the American military and create the famous Tuskegee Airmen, man. So you can go pre-order that everywhere you buy books right now. Now let's get back into our conversation with the 85 South Show. When, when y'all started doing video, how fast did things take off? Because I feel like everything shifted once y'all started putting the video up. Man, what what video did was, well, on the business side, we mm-hmm. said on the, on the on the production side, it forced us to be better producers. Because what we would do is just cut the mics on and they so talented. Mm-hmm. We're not really doing that. Mm-hmm. So then on the production side, now you're starting to figure out what's going on in the world so you can start to feed them some stuff to help them out. Now you're starting to uh, bring on different guests that can help, that you know can integrate into the show properly. Um, and then, you know, on the post-production side, you now you're learning programming on what show should come out on that's that you can hold on to that's evergreen or what show should come out because uh, Trump said something crazy or whatever happened cr- crazy into the world. Uh, so video made us a better production company. Mm-hmm. It didn't really take off for real until we started posting the live shows, which maybe was three or four years later. And like I said, that's still a whole separate element of yeah. the show. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, so the live podcast was doing better video wise than oh, the man. live no, show. We that's do, going, man, that do that 10 times the views. Yeah, once once that we, we went live but, and did the shows that way, it was like, I mean, I think it was because that element of the part that people have never seen yeah, before. It was right. like, what, what is this? Yeah, you could, became intrigued by it. Because, you know, in comedy, you know, that routine you might have worked on for a year, once it leaks, you got to start from scratch again. You may got to hit the comedy clubs again. But Mm -hmm. they were going off the top of the head, and it was, like, premium comedy every single time. People was tuning in. We would tell people we've been putting out Netflix specials. Forever. Forever. Yeah. Still Mm -hmm. is. We got Netflix special on YouTube right now. Yeah, Yeah, a bunch of them. Yeah. And we were shooting them at the highest value that we could afford to shoot. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, they was... Like Wayne was dropping mixtapes, we was dropping specials. You know, that's how we kind of looked at it, and that's where the rocket ship came from. I, I know the video, the video. So the, the audio started off kind of slow, and the video came out. The video took off. The and live show is what took everything. Yeah. Live show the audio went show. crazy, but we read. I don't, don't want to say we read comments. We we like to see what, what what our feedback yeah. is, and they like, man, I wish y'all would come here, and I wish y'all would come right, there. Right. And I remember the first time they were like, y'all want to go live. 
I was like, because I'm still trying to be a comedian. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, now you want me to go up there with, you want me to go up there with, motherfucker? Yeah. Yeah, I got to be a comedian on stage. But I'm like, okay, I did theater. And I've been on stage with people. But I've never been a comedian amongst other comedians besides acting with other actors. Mm. So it's like, okay, this is going to be challenging. And I like challenges. So I was like, I'm still trying to learn to be a comedian. But how can I be a good comedian amongst other comedians that's already solidified? So once we start doing it and people start coming, I was like, this could be your perfect way <clears throat> for you to just be yourself. The pressure's not on you. The pressure's not on them. It's a collective. All you got to do is just fill in whatever you think dry. And I know that he's doing the same. Wherever he come in, I said, that's where he good at. Mm-hmm. That's where he good at. So you just got to find out where you good at. And my part was to sit there and say, okay, I'm great at physical. Right, right. I just be the physical guy. You know what I'm saying? But it's 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 never it's never a a a, a point where we feel like we done, bro. Cause we still finding out new shit every, every day. time we hit the Didn't stage. Start it. Yeah, that's why I said like a few years ago, y'all. Uh, we we partnered, you know, with y'all at Black Effect, but just just for the audio. Did you see a difference in how the podcast was received once the audio started taking off? Cause once the audio numbers started matching the video numbers. Yeah. Did y'all see a difference? Yeah, we definitely see a difference in the in the crowd, in the in the audience. You can look around at the shows and see the difference that it made. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Now it ain't just, oh, this our spot or we good over here. It's like yeah. we universally good. And every place that we ain't we haven't been, they waiting on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, how do we do this? How are we gonna put how are we gonna go everywhere? And definitely being a part of like the black effect and that family and that group of talent. Y'all got access to people who, like you said, who may not be familiar with what's going on in the heart of the deep, dirty South. They might have called to listen to the Tesla, or you know what I mean? Right. And then 85 might have snuck in there and they left it on. And it was like, I like that. Mm-hmm. And you gave us a, like we have our own platform, but y'all got a big platform over there also. You on one of the biggest shows shit in America. The biggest show. Every morning. So it's you know like I mean? just to have that, that co-sign and for you to, bring us in, into y'all world definitely had an impact on what we do. I showed you, know you and Chad earlier, like since the Netflix special came out, y'all numbers like tripled for the week. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like y'all audio. On, on just the podcast, <laughs> yeah. audio, yeah. like Bro, tripled I, for the week. I'll tell you, like we never not valued audio. It's just that we didn't understand the value of it, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And because when you're growing a company, you got to put all your effort to what's making the most money. So if touring and a live show was making all the money, for three, four years. That's the baby. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you just focus here. So what it's done is the relationship with y'all, we've hired more audio people. Now we have people that are mixing and mastering in post-production, stuff that you just crack the mic and you you know drop it in the feed and it's all good. We 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 put that much reinvestment back into audio. I'll say that, knowing that. Y'all did something that was so smart, man. Um, I think it's genius because I keep telling folks you can't solely rely on YouTube. No. And, and you can't turn YouTube into... A real business. No. You know what I mean? No. Because you, you don't own it. Because it's, it's at their discretion. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they could flag your videos. They could not pay you. They right. could. But there's the, that's the part that was so frustrating to me, though. It's like, if this video was so bad that it's flagged and it's not monetized, why y'all just didn't take it down? Right. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, now I guess with this whole ad revenue thing, it's like people are asking the same questions. It's yeah. like, you want to demonetize it. But you see these views is ran up. Somebody got paid. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. And they're using the numbers to go get some more money. Yeah. Right. And it's really going to, sh- yeah. it's straining the hell out of these creators too. Cause it's like, bro, you took, you took your first big YouTube check and you invested in some equipment. And now them checks, you thinking it's going to be another yeah. 50, 60, 70. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then your, your October payout wasn't but 7,000. Mm-hmm. Now, now you, you upside down. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just to have that platform and, to be owned, like to own it and to be independent and to know that none of that shit is going to happen. We're going to be monetized either way. We, we good. Y'all took y'all, uh, y'all took y'all content off YouTube. I want to pull up one of those things you, t- you was, t- you, you was referencing, you was referencing, uh, they, they reported this week in the wall street journal. Let me pull it up. It says, um, what the YouTube say? violated their own terms. Yeah. Of uh, ad- uh, about 80% of the ads YouTube serves across the web have violated their own terms of service and are therefore subject to refunds. So Google Ads is going to have to pay out <laughs> billions of dollars 
in YouTube ads. And then there was another one that said YouTube creators say video revenue down up to 90 percent. Something is definitely off. So you can't rely on YouTube Man. to be a business. But what y'all did was take y'all video content off YouTube yeah. and start y'all own app. Got you. to tell you, mm-hmm. we didn't even need to speak to like no YouTube reps until yeah. we decided we made the announcement that yeah. we're going with the ads. <laughs> then they sent a whole Came team nowhere, down yeah. and tried to, you know, oh, this will not happen to you guys. We didn't know that you were doing this, these numbers. And yeah. we're so glad to have you on our team. Mm-hmm. Like, OK, we still not rocking Bugging with you. Hold on. Speak to that. So hold up. <laughs> Wait a minute. So, what y'all called YouTube customer services? No, so? they, called they called us. Listen, listen, bro, for two to three years, it was. We would sit down every couple months. Well, we need to put out more content. We we need short form. Because they come up with new rules for YouTube every time. Mm-hmm. Right. And, bro, at one point, I remember Fly was like, bro, we giving them too much. Like, it doesn't matter. So we started diving back into the analytics. And you could have a great month, especially during the holiday season from, from October all the way to January. Rocket ship numbers, you thinking this is normal. But come... March, April, May, you're like, bro, what are, what are we doing? And nothing has changed mm-hmm. as far to as the point output. where, where we be like, man, just y'all can have a YouTube. Yeah, like right, it's not right. even, it's not, it's not even. It, it, there's no rhyme or reason. Mm-hmm. So we finally, especially during the pandemic, we put our heads around launching our own platform. As soon as we launch that platform, YouTube reaches out to us, and you know we started some conversations, thinking, well, everything's gonna be good. Maybe we'll put regular content over here and premium content over there. Man, three months later, still same stuff. So eventually, you don't, there's, there's, I tell people there's value in YouTube, but the value, you can't, what you just said, you can't build a core business, business model yeah. around, there's no, you can't, there's no like model you can create because you really have no idea how much money you're about to make. Not unless you miss the beast or somebody. Yeah. yeah like, you, see, you don't even really know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you but never really know, advertise. you know what I mean? They can't, you can't determine what it is they determine you get paid, you know what I'm saying? And that's one of the difficult things about any platform that you're not in control of. It's like, well, what do you get? Well, you get what we give you, exactly. you know what I'm saying? And, you know, if we decide to give you a little bit more or a little bit less, that's what you get, that's right. you know what I'm saying? But when you're able to, you know, be able to see the numbers, you're able to, you know, understand from a perspective, it makes it even easier to go back and have those conversations with the big platforms, uh, the Netflixes and the YouTube. It's like, okay, we already have an understanding of what these numbers are and how these people are affected by the content that we're putting out based on these numbers. Mm -hmm. What can you offer us? It don't, it changes the meeting, if you will. You don't go in like, you know what I mean? What can what can what can we do for you? Is what can you then do once for you us? find out that they know how to manipulate these oh, numbers, man. however yes. they yeah. want to yeah. manipulate it, that's crazy. Because yeah. like you say, it ain't no rhyme or reason, or <laughs> you can't sit there and come up with a formula and say I'm gonna drop a video every day for thirty right. days. That's thirty videos a month, so I should make this. Right. It right. just don't work like they that. They just give you the money and you be happy here. You like, all right, but you ain't questioning nothing. You like, right. how did y'all come up with this number? Yeah. Nobody cares. It's like streaming service, mm-hmm. like the music game. Come on, man. Yeah. You got to get almost 30,000 screens just to get $5. So I've who been, really getting all the money before the before you get your $5? That's right. I've been on call with their experts and their experts. There's only so much answer they can do until they start giving generic information. And mm-hmm. at that point, I'm like, they don't even give you the information, you know? So at that point, how much more investment are we going to make into this platform? So, so what do y'all use YouTube for? Distribution promotion. and promotion, yeah. Yeah, we still yeah. Have what everybody else using it for? Yeah. We still got a Master big fan base deal. over there that me? that just refuses to, you know, physically subscribe, subscribe yeah. and support. Yeah. I don't know what it is. just takes time. You know, what I mean, you yeah. get somebody something for free, and then it don't matter if you come back charging a dollar for it, a dollar. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, hey, huh? <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> like, so if you can, you know, if we continue to be, and this Netflix, I think, is going to be a big, you know piece in getting those those YouTube people to subscribe because they going once you get to a point a platform like Netflix and people start talking about something you'd be like oh wait a minute motherfucker right. I've been in, you talking to me about some shit I've been knew about what right. did you know about this and then you're like you know what fuck I'm out of I'm going to pay that little eight ninety nine, right. so mm. I don't miss out on nothing no more because yeah. these niggas playing with me like I ain't been down with these motherfuckers for the last six, seven years. Mm-hmm. Can so you I imagine think- that, though? We get two and a half million people to go subscribe to our app. Yeah. <laughs> How many of y'all got now? We don't want to talk about you it because <laughs> we don't want nobody yeah, trying to add nothing. Yeah, yeah. Come, that nigga be unsubscribing. Oh, well, shit, y'all don't need my $8. Yeah, nah. <laughs> so y'all, y'all, y'all can put clips on YouTube now. 
Yeah, well, well no, we, we put do shows. Little teasers. We still put shows. We'll put one studio show that's an hour long okay. on 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 the platform. But we also have advertising, video advertising uh, partnerships where they may want integrated marketing or product placement or a thirty second read. Mm-hmm. But now, as we are, and we did a uh, eighty vibe. You know oh, yeah, and we, we introduced new shows through there as well, just to get, like, an idea of what people will respond to. But, like, new talent, like, Nav has a show that we partner with him, a sports show on Broken Play that we uh, put through YouTube, because you still want to take advantage of... It's a digital billboard. Yeah, you build the, it, you yeah. use it to build shit up. But we don't mm-hmm. have, like, core financial... Dependence. Dependency mm-hmm. on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just is what it is. When y'all started the Channel 85 app, you know, a lot of people be scared to put their content behind a paywall because uh-huh. they don't know if they'll lose their audience or, or if people yeah. will pay for it. Did y'all feel that way? No. No. No, because we, we have a community. You know, I don't even really like to say uh, fans because I tell people in business, the hardest part in business, especially in our in our age, uh, is getting somebody to transact. Mm. So if you can get them to buy merchandise or subscribe to a newsletter or buy a ticket or uh, purchase behind a paywall, this is your real community. So those two and a half million or 10 million followers you got on Instagram, that's, that's not real. Re- people that really transact with you are, are the people you want to build. build and that's the around. that's the beauty of what we do. Like when Lo said the Avengers, like that's real because, you know, you look at the Avengers, you got, you know, Iron Man and Thor and all these people that they had their own movie. But mm-hmm. when they the Avengers, they the Avengers. And it's the same thing about us individually. We go and do a comedy club in the weekend and sell however many tickets. That's a section in one of these arenas we're doing now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So when we come together, it's like everybody that, you know, it, no matter who they like, you know what I'm saying? You like all of us together. But if you like one of us individually, you, you're not going to say I'm not going to see Thor because Iron Man is, you know what I mean? You're not going to do that. You're going to go see both of them. And I love you, that. I love when motherfuckers be like, man, I, I, she go the funniest one. Mm-hmm. DC the funniest mm-hmm. one. I be like, yeah. I agree. Me right. too. So I, I want to be Arnold. around motherfuckers like they, the, they make me laugh. Exactly. These are my top two niggas. These my partners. Yeah. Yeah. You t- nigga, I know. I knew before you knew. You, you, exactly. Yeah. Y'all gonna make it to the point where comedians gonna have to click up. So, 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 what are the keys to keeping a healthy brotherhood throughout all of the business? Keep God first. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying. Keep God first, and knowing that, like you say, man, respecting each other's value and mm-hmm. respecting each other's understanding and you know because this is how it started it never was a starter of us coming together and be like let's put all our ideas together and we just created it was just like okay you want to do that I rock with you okay but look I want to add this too you rock with it mm-hmm. Matt what about you What? oh this shit you want to do I rock with it we're never denying anything or any suggestion that anybody brings to the table bro and I feel like we don't have a a blueprint of how a successful business starts mm-hmm. and how do we prolong it and keep it going. So we're learning every day through the experiences. We're learning every day from our ups and downs and our trials. But at the end of the day, we keep God first and we like, look, bro, we're hearing it from the people that hasn't been done before. So we ha- we got something. Right. How long do we want it? All right, we hear them. How long do we want to do this? Mm-hmm. Forever? Forever? Wow. Forever. So you know, we got to keep that been, forever energy. It's been dope just trying to see how much, how many other things we can run through our brand and our business. Right. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, of course, it's the live shows, it's the merch, it's the brand, it's the studio. But it's like, how much other shit can we put under this umbrella? Are we going to be the only ones that benefit off of our brand? Right. No, we're going to branch out and we're going to help build out the poor mindset mm-hmm. and, and help them build their core audience and, and find a place for Nav and his show. And we're going to try a whole bunch of different things. They might not all work, but we're going to have them under our own terms and we're going to find out the best way that works for us. Motherfucker man. Clayton, y'all keep saying the man. Avengers. Clayton was one on, on the Avengers. Yeah. Clayton, yeah, Clayton, Clayton, Clayton yeah. was on the Avengers. And you know, it's really ego control, man. Everybody got their ego in control. You know it's not about you and being People able to. People see the bigger picture. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, if you if 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 you have, I think that's what hindered the the ones before us. Everybody's ego was so, I got to, I got to be, I got to have this, like, you, you know what I mean? I Having you a that, perfect example, bro. Look at Joe. Joe just laid out chilling. <laughs> got weed in his pocket and yeah. grew his hair out. His beard is big. He don't got a care in the fucking world. 
he might stay in New York two, three weeks after this. <laughs> like that's when I that's when it started hitting me. When I said this somewhere the other day, it's like when you start seeing your friends quit their job and live their dreams, mm-hmm. and they don't have to go do shit else. That's mm-hmm. when you know you're making strides. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, when yeah. we was out to eat one night. I saw Nav. Nav was eating his food. Nav said, "Hey, man." Anytime Chico don't show up, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, that check was something serious. When he did the, when we did the Black Effect thing. Um, oh, 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 yeah, the yeah, yeah, the podcast. Oh, yeah, all the way, yeah. Y'all ain't fuck with me. I'm fuck about to say, why that fuck nigga picked me? Who's out of town? Hey, you ain't called me, nigga. Like, 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 anytime Chico don't show, show up, let me know. They had shows. Yeah, shows. Yeah. Well, let me decline, motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, I probably could decline know, that show that came see, on here. Charlamagne do you like that, my nigga? This nigga, <laughs> this nigga do you like that? He'll look out for you, but he also do you no, like that? No, we reached out to eighty five side. You know what I mean? Nah, no, you know, nah, you know once, once somebody from 85 South win, we all And win. then it ain't just you, Dolly, cuss me out about that shit. Every time, anytime I miss anything that's black, if she be like, nigga, I'm like, yes, ma'am. I just, I just, you know, because you already know with her, like, we done been locked in for so long. She going to call me directly and cuss me out. It ain't going to be no business call. It's going to, like, y'all know the business, Dolly. Like, I know the real Dolly. Like, I love that, too, about how you built the black effect, too, because you went and grabbed Rachel and the, and the Dolly, and it's like, Bro, we knew how dope they were when we first, right. you know, started mm-hmm. working with them. And for you to have to come and recognize, like, y'all got way more talent and way more skills than what y'all, they using y'all for. I, so I, I respect it and I commend it. I don't want nah, to see you I remember know. when Rachel was uh, Candida's secretary mm-hmm. 12 yeah. years ago. And mm-hmm. Dolly was I Nick's was secretary. In, yeah, Dolly's you know, assistant, word mm-hmm, up. I used yeah. to sit in the edit bay with them back in the day. But you could just see it. You know, in a, same thing you probably saw in Chad. Like, you know Chad is... Executive level, bro. I didn't know at first. You didn't. Nah. Know. <laughs> bro, at first, didn't know. You see how you just laughed? Yeah. That's all he the fuck Chad used to do yeah. in our job. We bro. used to try to sell sneakers together and sell cell phones, and I ain't really sell nothing, dog. Just laughing yeah, at him because this nigga don't give a fuck about <laughs> nothing, bro. Like this <laughs> nigga, Y'all, th- he has like, changed. You know so how much, you know bro. how a cat is just in disinterested with everything. Like yeah. you can't impress no cat. Like it don't matter what's going on. This nigga be sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> It's he crazy. didn't give a flying yeah, fuck. Like, bro, yeah, bro, we do it. Yeah, good, good job, good job. What you mm-hmm. was doing with Steve when I met you, Chad? Uh, photography, right? Yeah, I was. Well, no, me, but fuck you. Nah, no, I, nah, I worked hard when I worked Steve. That's why I got fired. I was, I was like overly ambitious. But me and uh, me and Joe <laughs> ran all of his digital. So anything that you saw come out from his uh, Twitter newsletter, YouTube, we shot it, produce it. Uh, yeah, I knew, it was and we camp. was publishing everything. Yeah, 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 that's why I met Charlamagne at Steve's camp. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, that was like ten years ago, eight years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How important is ownership to y'all? Because y'all have always been big on ownership. So- you can't get kicked out, and can't nobody buy you. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, you know that we have, yeah. uh, ladies and gentlemen, fuck. DC Young Fly. I'm big on that ball shit. I, fuck yeah. what a nigga yeah. talking about. Yeah. I have a strange relationship with getting fired. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> is some sort of ownership mandatory in all y'all deals, or is it something? Yes, because black people don't own shit, and yeah. we watch all our heroes that broke yeah. damn near. I agree. You know what I'm saying? You don't yeah. own nothing. I, I, yeah. They told you you can do what got yeah. you on. They like stop doing that. You like why? Man. Cause we own it now. Equity is important in everything. If you can get some equity, man, like. Yeah. You know, I was, I forget, what's my man name? Uh, Jason Weaver, mm-hmm. how his mama was smart enough to yeah. be able to get that back end deal. Like, and you th- yeah, exactly. You think about those, like those type of deals and that type of insight to have. Like if you go in, like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like what, what Magic did with, uh, with Converse when he signed, you know, how his deal oh, worked. Yeah, he was getting 800 yeah, every, year. every year. And now he get 32 million on the mm-hmm. back end. Like that's, yeah, yeah. that's something you want to be the case so it's it's but it's hard though it's hard for niggas to come in and not take that lump sum up front because if you, you ain't never it, had something they drain you they, they yeah. strain you all the way out and, yeah. t- and they'll starve you out as artists just like on fight club when they be like you gotta stand on the porch for a week you yeah. got your boots you got your right. pants right. you got your t-shirt mm-hmm. you got your belt yeah. I and mean, they just leave you out there. That's exactly how they do you man they'll starve you it's out. It's like financial literacy that we're not knowledgeable about especially when you realize you're like they doing deals like that and you like yeah, you don't know. And it's like, nobody put us up on gang that month, that those type of deals. We're being negotiated. We're, ne- we're negotiating, but they're playing hardball like, it's all we got. Mm-hmm. And then you come to find out, you like, hold up. So they did a deal like that with y'all, but what was all, what, 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 what was obligated? What was you obligated to do? Mm-hmm. And then when you realize, oh, we're doing over and beyond what we're obligated. So now we're just employees and it's not a family situation. 
that's when you got to go for the bigger book. You're like, you right. know what? We got to go for the bang. We knew ownership was important because they don't want to give nobody none. Yep. They want to hire everybody, but they don't want to. They don't want to partner with nobody. Yeah. And see, but see, y'all put yourselves in a position you can't do anything but partner with y'all. Exactly. So, so how have the strategic partnerships y'all done with like Netflix and Black Effect benefited the overall brand? Man, I'd say for the first five years, we were scared to partner with anybody because mm. we didn't trust nobody. I remember. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, it wasn't even that we was thinking about it. We was just like, bro. Nigga trying to give a 3000 yeah, episode. Yeah, one. either we going, <laughs> this shit going to sink is because we sank it type of thing, you know? Uh, I'm going to be real with you, bro. Like, you was calling us before the pandemic, you know, and uh, talking to you and, you know, some of the private conversations we had about the people that I admired versus, you know, how current modern business works and all those sort of things. And um, Strategic partnerships, I think very specifically for black companies, for independent companies, we need them mm -hmm. because uh, uh, there's only so much money to go around for resources and you don't recognize these are billion dollar companies. So you may have a $10 million, $20 million company. That's cute. But if this company got $5 billion just to blow on money, you're never going to close any sort of gap. So uh, strategic partnerships became uh, important for us as long as we knew it wasn't about the money. Why are we partnering with these people? What, what is the value that we can bring together? And it has to feel like a legitimate partnership mm -hmm. because a bunch of people approach us and they really just want us to work for them, but they just got a big old check. Um, so strategic partnerships now are very important. I, obviously, you see what Netflix has done for us um, in a relationship with y'all has been has been very good, but we don't have a bunch of them. We got the right ones, if that makes sense. Do you think y'all ever get to a point where opportunity is no longer an appropriate means of compensation? No, we already have uh, yes, yeah, uh, bro. No more. Yeah, yeah man. Well, I mean, it depends on yeah. what, the what the opportunity is, is Charlemagne. Right? You was over there on that boat with them white people, and they, what type of opportunity they giving you? <laughs> no, they got all the money. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> they don't need no opportunity. Uh, if nah, I'm saying nah, what type me they giving you, shit, and be like, "Lo, it'd be a good look." I'm not interested. Yeah. See, until we start getting invited for golf tournaments. Yeah, yeah that type of shit you get. Once we you know get to I mean? that level when they start inviting, yeah, yeah come on out to Canes. Oh, yeah. We have the yacht for a week. Come on yeah. out. Yeah. Steve yeah. doing it. Steve yeah. doing it. I'm, I'm going to be out there in November with Steve in Dubai. See, we ain't well, invited. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, we got to get to the point where we get invited. No golf tournament in Dubai. They got golf courses in Dubai. They got everything in Dubai. Steve Harvey do his own. They get invited to like the got a crib out domestic ones, not the international Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think anything want to play. I said that to him at his at, a, at the golf tournament that he just had I, they made me come up and do a speech I was like nigga everybody keep talking about how hospitable you are you ain't never did nothing but show me how much better you living than I am nigga <laughs> you ain't invited me nowhere you flying niggas to Dubai and all this type of shit and you just want me to come see how much bigger your new house is Dang. fuck this this ain't fair you owe me Mr. Hightower nigga you need to stop <laughs> making up for some of that he, old shit he said he'd do it just to get us in the room with Nah, he does. No, that was it was dope. Yeah, I will yeah, say, like, love. just being able to look around yeah, and see yeah. all them dudes that was famous when I was a little boy is like it's surreal because you get the opportunity to, to get that level of confirmation that the people that you grew up. The people that you grew up with. Y'all passing numbers around? Man, hey, man, you're a freak, hey, my nigga. Something numbers, wrong with you. You got cash numbers. No, we ain't passing no cash <laughs> they numbers. Just but this. You know, you get the you, my prize you, you get the uh you get to get the confirmation that the people that you grew up loving love you. Yeah. And that's that's, you know, as far as outside of opportunity, that's something that makes you feel like, man, yeah, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing because you seeing people that was a world away from you. Like, these people was inside the box when I was a broke little boy in D.C. Right. And then they like, hey, man, we love what you're doing. I'm a big fan of your work. I'm like, nigga, and so am I. Like, yeah, you put know me what I mean? up on some opportunities to make some more paper. Yeah. Because I got a lot of catching up to do. I told you, my granddaddy never had a pair of drawers that fit him right. <laughs> and I feel like I got to get back at the world for that. Because mm -hmm. I know he didn't never reach his full greatness because his drawers was too big. He wasn't comfortable. Well, like I said, my daddy ain't had no headstone. He definitely ain't do what he was supposed to do before you know he got saying, up out of bro, here. We so, got to yeah. overcharge these niggas for what they did, did to, to the, the cold, cold crush, crush all the way. Right. The Brilliant Idiots is brought to you today by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience and sell anything, your products, content you create, and even your time. Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unblock a new revenue stream screen for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, or newsletters. Create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app 
helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. Stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logo. Built-in analytics measure the impact of every sin. Use those analytics and insights to grow your business. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot with offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. And I got to thank Molson Cause once again, man. Molson Cause, thank you, thank you, thank you for sponsoring the Brilliant Idiots. Life's more exciting when there are peaches involved. And that's why we're brought to you by Simply Spiked Peach, okay? From the makers of Simply Spiked Lemonade, Simply Spiked Peach is now available. 21 and older only because it contains alcohol, okay? All flavors are simply spiked. They're crafted with 5% AP, ABB and 5% real fruit juice squeezed and concentrated. This spring, Simply Spiked has introduced a flavor that fans have been asking for since day one, and that's that peach, baby. That's Simply Spiked Peach. Pick up a variety pack today. Try all four new fresh flavors, Signature Peach, Strawberry Peach, Kiwi Peach, and Mango Peach. Simply Spiked Peach is the newest addition to the Simply Spiked family. Joining Simply Spiked Lemonade, which broke the internet when it dropped last summer with its four bold and refreshing flavors, Signature Lemonade, Strawberry Lemonade, Blueberry Lemonade, and Watermelon Lemonade. Go to drinksimplyspiked.com slash idiots to find out how to get your hands on new Simply Spiked Peach. That's drink simplyspiked.com slash idiots flavored beer naturally flavored with other natural flavors simply spiked company milwaukee wisconsin celebrate responsibly simply spiked is a trademark of the simply orange juice company now let's get back to our conversation with the 85 south show what were some things y'all were intentional about intentional about when doing this deal with netflix in particular man uh being taken serious yeah Yeah. netflix was a two-year deal bro Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might have been three to keep three, it Three, really? Yeah. yeah. Um, I remember the first time we all sat down, um, and they had a bunch of, uh, these. Are, this is what we're not going to do sort of thing, and I got to bring that back to them. Um, but we was intentional about Netflix. One, I think once it settled on us that it was a commercial, it the light kind of went off for us on how to approach it. Because, you know, we, nah, we got to own it. It's got to be this. It's got to be this. But once we took that approach, uh, it made it an easier, a easier process. Everybody, everybody adjusted to. I how tried. To, I had to talk to them into it. I'm just yeah. gonna say it. Yeah. We on the platform. I had to talk them into yeah. it. They was yeah. ready to walk. I was like, no, no, yeah. no, yeah. no. I ain't gonna lie. All right, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. real big on bending, boy. Yeah. I would be yeah. like, boy, hey, yeah. boy, we way more powerful than that, boy. I don't care yeah. about that. No, no, like, no, DC. I'm like, that's what you do. I'm going with you, big bro. Just right. listen. Yeah. Yeah. This is an opportunity. Yeah. For us to be opportunists. We don't want and them to have in. shit. He like, mm, let's nah, do it. I'm like, I'm know, rocking with you. Yeah, the way fuck. I looked at it was like, it's like performing at the Super Bowl, man. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? That's, it's, it. that's what it is. It's like Almost it's like, like, before, it's like performing at the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? You get that Super Bowl halftime performance. Your streams go up. Your ticket sales go up. Yeah. And that's the way you look at it. You know what I mean? It's like a Super Bowl performance for what we do in comedy. We got to put our platform on a platform that's as big as the Super Bowl in regards to streaming, and now we went number one. So now I'm scared though. See, I'm, 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 I'm saying I'm scared. But see, this is because I don't want nobody to come to one of our live shows and then the first twelve rows is sold out, and all the niggas are gonna be like, "Bro, what? like, yeah, bro, y'all should have embraced this while but, you had but the see, chance." Did, but she did the thing right. They know we're capable of going number one, but they also know that we'll negotiate to keep ownership, mm-hmm. and we're willing to turn away. If we don't get on the ship. So as long as everybody's standpoint still got approved and got across the right way, because I'm like, like you said, the deal was two years. It wasn't two years because we couldn't get our shit together. Mm -hmm. It was two years because we were like, no. Working on our own terms and conditions. Hell no. It ain't sounding right upon to what we trying to do. Like he said, it's halftime. It's the Super Bowl. But guess what? It may be the Dolphins playing goddamn Shits and giggles. That yeah. this ain't the right Super Bowl right here. We gotta wait yeah. till the big one. Yeah. And once that bitch when was that big, one in Miami, the yeah, one in Miami, one in the Cowboys ain't Let never going to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean that type of one. That so you know, it's just it's one of those things where we realize that the next time they come, it's like you can't deny. You know what I mean? You can't deny can't what it is. You can't deny what it is. You know what I mean? That's the beauty of getting that opportunity. That you know, mm-hmm. like you was talking about getting that opportunity. If I 
if you give me the opportunity to show up and I'm, you know, auditioning for a contract in the NBA, when I come and I destroy everything, when we tear down the whole, you can't come to me and say, well, we only have a 10 day. Well, I don't play on 10 days. The only re- I shouldn't even have to be doing this. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I did it Yahweh just to show that, okay, I'm willing to take this step back and let you handle the business the way you handle business just to show you that when we come in and handle business, this is what business look like on this side. You know what I mean? Y'all want them to come back with one of them Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle deals. Hell yeah. I ain't Netflix. got no choice. They might do they that. Want them they might do like a two, three deal with y'all. Two, three They ain't got no deal. choice. And we already got them ready for them. Yeah. They ain't got to do nothing put their name on. What's one of the biggest lessons uh, you learned while, while turning the 85 South show into the brand it is right now? Doing it with a collective. Yeah. That is possible. Like you said, ain't no blueprint. Mm-hmm. It ain't no blueprint to be a successful black owned business. You know what I'm saying? Cause like everybody swear up and down, somebody in the mix and somebody like, no, bro, we are professionals. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. You have to be a professional. Our emotions is out the way, our egos is out the way, and we come together and sit down in the round table and we make the best decision better on the business. Not for you, you and you. It's a collective. If nine out of 11 is agreeing with it, the other two got to ride with the nine. Mm-hmm. I don't care. That's just how we is. And I feel like I always look back at this and we all go do our own ventures and do our own things, but we take what we learn from that and we bring it back over here because we have a successful business that we built from dirt. And like you say, we went number one, we on billboards, but we ain't done. No, you're not even we old. ain't nowhere near done. So we just got to continue. What yeah. would you say? I mean, for me, it's just been trust and how important it is in all things that you do, especially business. You know what I mean? You got to trust people, man. You got to trust that, you know what I mean? If I close my eyes and grab your shoulder, that I'm going to make it to wherever the fuck we're supposed to be going to and vice versa. So just that level of trust and being able to know that no matter what decision is being made is for the greater good of everybody and being able to trust that and being okay with whatever happens in regards to the decisions that is made. If it don't work, it don't work together. If it does work, it works together. Whatever failures we've had, we felt together. That billboard that's in Times Square, LA, we get to celebrate that the same way we dealt with the failures together. So that level of trust that's there is one of the most important things in building a business that looks like the one we've built, we've built and we're building is because if you don't have that trust, you don't get to this point. You don't get to the point of being able to, you know, revel in the successes of going to somewhere as big as YouTube or being on a black <clears> effect <throat> or having the type of relationships that we had. Because when we get separate from each other, you will be able to know that we don't really fuck with each other because the energy will be different when I'm around versus them two around and vice versa. So that level of trust that is present when we together versus when we not together, that same energy ain't nothing going to be said by these two motherfuckers about me or vice versa that we wouldn't say to each other in front of the world. Like that level of trust is so important because nobody can break into, you know, and come and get in your ear and be like, man, hey, man, fuck that shit, man. You know, that's the only way that can happen is when that trust ain't there. So I realize how important trust is in, in business. What about you, Lo? Or Chad? Uh, Good. <clears throat> no, I'll say it's two things for me. Uh, there's no... There's like, there's no protection in being isolated, you know? So um, as much as we talk about the collective, that's a real thing, you know? As soon as some money comes down the table, we're talking through it. As soon as the opportunity comes down the table, we're collectively talking through it. I don't have to be like a genius because I have three geniuses right here and another three there that we can get to a middle ground. Um, And then secondly, I think this process has taught me uh, business is not as much money or hard work as it is leverage. So you really or just building leverage, more or less leverage every day. And that's kind of how you navigate through the world. But that's not something you learn in a business class or something you're going to read in a book. The, 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 the more leverage you can create is the more that you can control and navigate your own world. Los? Um, one of the most important lessons that I learned about this is that money is important, but it's not, it holds no value. Oh, that's how I know y'all getting money now. <laughs> no, I'm not saying this. I'm, what I'm saying is, I mean, you got to chill out, bro. You ain't doing this shit too many years, my name. But I'm, it's like money is important, but it holds no value. Like money should never break up the family or change who you are as a person or, or ch- like change your thought process. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? That's the number one thing that people fall out about in this industry. Tell and me when you When you have a team and you have a collective, you have to make sure everybody eats. 
Cause you don't want you don't want none of that. Mm-hmm. N- Cause that can fuck up your whole synergy. One unhappy person can fuck up all the success. But you got to make sure you look out for your people and take care of your people, and and don't sell your soul for the dollar. But you know the sad part, even when you do, uh, you can be take care care, care of your people, but they want more. Exactly. That's that's when that's ego it. comes in. Mm-hmm. That's when, and, and I learned that from him, not the ego part, but the money part. Mm-hmm. Cause you know me, I'm tight. Mm-hmm. I'm like hell no. He like this, fuck it. I'm like, what you mean, fuck it? Hell no. You kill what you eat. Like he like listen, if that's what it is, let it go. We gonna keep going, and it rubbed off on me. Like it rubbed off on me. He we ain't have to <clears> speak about it again or nothing. I was just like, well, if that motherfucker can do that. Okay, now I'm trying to figure out how he see it. Why did he move like that? If he moved like that, it's only because it's a, it's a, it's a good heart. And it ain't about the dollar because we're going to get the dollar. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, let me try it. And then when I tried, I, I saw myself doing it constantly and constantly and constantly. Well, I'm like, all right, what sacrifice did you take? I right, was what, Okay, well, look, you take that chick. All right, well, you get that one. Because I ain't really, not saying I'm not tripping on it as a collective you As see a what business, it do. Yeah. I yeah. see how it keeps going and it keeps moving. And I'm like, all right, that's what this is all about. It's about picking up the slack and keep going. And this is probably one of the best, this is probably the best business, best group of people I done ever been around, bro. And would, would, if, if, all, if, if all fails and, more, and motherfuckers say, you got 10 people to build, build a business with, who you going to get? I'm going to get these motherfuckers. That's real. Straight up. But I just got to chill just by saying this. That's real, like, though, I man. I don't go get these money. And that's why I want... Mm-hmm. It ain't about fuck the money or none of that shit. It's just that, man, that shit is the easiest way to destroy everything that you did. Right. The wrong motherfuckers, the wrong... Like, it bring, it breeds so much envy and negativity mm-hmm. and, and resentment. Right. So you have to use that shit as the tool that it literally is. It ain't just about... Cap clocking every dollar or chasing the bag. It's it's about your integrity, your mental, pe- love. Like, what are you using this money for? You could just pile it up and have all of it, but if it ain't making the motherfuckers around you better or providing better reasons, like everything for making everything around you better, it's fucking useless. That's real. Last question. Uh, how do y'all see the 85 South Show brand evolving from here? Hiring a uh, breakfast club. <laughs> you gonna hire the breakfast club? I ain't giving this nigga no money. He got all the money. Like he, he got all the money. Charlemagne God really is, is that man. Is the greatest man. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean. But nah, you know, for me, I would say I, you know, that that question is always unique to me because I mean, Los was just talking outside. Like man, I never try to limit myself to what my mind can think of because mm-hmm. if I did, then I wouldn't have been able to write out half the shit I've accomplished already. So as long as I can keep, we keep doing this, whatever God got in store for us doing the work that is necessary for us to keep doing it, it's going to be to the sky, man. Bro, 2013, we was in this city, me and this motherfucker walking back and forth to Western Union money gram. Broke. Sending the little fifties and hundreds home, two hundreds. To go from being broke walking around this city to having a fucking billboard. Mm-hmm. In Times Square, in ten years, nobody could have ever told us that. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like you, you just when you look at it from that perspective, and just you know the way my mind work would keep me humble. I guess is all the things that are issues in my life now would have been the solutions to every problem I had when we was walking down the street in 2013. Yeah, I'm talking about. Whatever it may be, oh, man, I just had to like you think about it. You just said you had to do what you had to do to get back from, you know, what I mean, uh, L.A. to New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine when you was a nigga working in Philadelphia. Yeah. Living with my mom. I, I was living with my mom in 2009 back think, home with a two year old at 32 years old. Think about <laughs> that. And, and you think about that's the really? fact that you could do that yeah. now. Like, that's what keeps me from answering the way you see it going because who the would you have been oh yeah one day I'm gonna be able to just boom and now you wouldn't have thought no shit like that your mind wouldn't allow you so even though we are where we are now I would never restrict myself to try to figure out what's gonna happen because it's bigger than what I can ever imagine I know it I wanna have one of them big ass buildings with a lot of bricks 
And we all got the whole top floor. Ain't number of offices and shit. <laughs> you got to get one of them little passes to come up. Y'all got that now in Atlanta? Y'all got a damn compound. Yeah, but we we going up with it. Yeah. Just, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah we, we still on, on the ground. We, we wide right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go. You want to go vertical. So yeah. the flow yeah. above, above it, I mean, up under us is... It's, it's part of. We just gonna keep part stacking of, on top of the bid. We going we not about to stop with no one studio. That's our first studio. Mm -hmm. We gonna look back, like you said, in five, ten. Like, right. damn, how did we pull that off in that little bit of head bill? Mm -hmm. Right. Look really, how much work we did. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Nigga, we need these fifty flows. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. We got fifty different shits going on That's on every right. flow. Yeah. What you see, Chad? How you see the brand evolving? I, I don't even. I still think we on like we finally getting to the checkpoint of stage one. You know, like where we really have a media company. So we have a studio, we got a film division, we have a management company, we have a merchandise company. Um, and now we're here. Okay, now we're running a company. And, you know, so like in, in my world, we're somewhere, you know, what what Tyler Perry is and what he's created, kind of following that trajectory. Yeah, because he ain't called us yet. Yeah. That's how I know we still got work to do yeah. in Atlanta. Yeah. Tyler yeah. Perry ain't reached out to us on nothing. <laughs> Yeah. Who's the Tyler? I was just talk, I was just, I was talking to Tyler uh, a couple days ago. We well, need to call us on three way, nigga. Yeah. No, because y'all nice two <laughs> are the only people I saw super serve those secondary markets. You know, oh, they man. like to call us the secondary markets, yeah. the Charleston, South Carolinas, and the you know the the Jackson, Mississippi. What they like? Yeah. They say that's the secondary. But y'all go there and y'all super serve those people. Man, okay, you can't, that's all you, first of all, they not secondary market. Like, 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 primary market. Nobody, nobody. Uh, people, I heard when you said that in the interview, I I thought about it. Like that's bullshit when yeah. you think about it yeah. because. We're just the only ones who make it known that we're catering to those markets. Yeah. Every black artist that there is yeah. makes Everybody. their money That's right. in uh, the South. Yes. Everybody. Right. In the history. Right. Everybody. They call, they, they call it the Chitlin Circuit, which is disrespectful. Yeah. It's actually the heart and soul of black yeah, exactly. it, it was the Chitlin Circuit at the time because it was the only places that we were allowed to showcase our talent. Right. Because we couldn't go to these venues. Like you said, when we beat these certain... Uh, entities and we we made number one over these entities. They thinking that that's number one, and other people are watching it. And I, kudos to everybody that's that's popping their shit. But when we get the opportunity, you see what we do. Mm -hmm. So they looking at us like, oh, these are chitlin circuit acts. And I'm like, yeah. no, we, we we just we we acts. Jeez, you right. feel me? That's what it is. And the South ain't a chitlin circuit. It's fifty states in the United States. And LA they, ain't the biggest. Nope. And they just shut down <laughs> affirmative action in colleges, so niggas might be on their way back to the Chitlin Circuit. <laughs> hey, you know, the, way um, they, the way it go. From the business side, I love LA, love New York, uh, love Philly, love Chicago. Them the most expensive cities to produce anything. Mobile, uh, Memphis, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, Jacksonville, Florida. These people, Nashville, they gonna come to your show. And then they're going to sell it out. Then they're going to sell it out two or three times. Back. Then they're going to buy all your merchandise. Back. Then they're going to ask you to come do a pop-up shop for $10,000 right. for three hours. Because they appreciate the art. Yeah. Right. They don't look they gonna, at it like chitlin' circuit. And then they're going to cook. They're going to uh, cook out right there in front of the store and offer you home-cooked food. Back. You know, it feels like family. It's Charlotte, North Carolina, South Carolina, all these cities we go to in the South. They treat us, it's real. Damn near seventy percent of all black people yeah, in America. Yeah, are in but the and South. that's the Come thing on, about being up here though, like in New York, you see that transition and you see yeah. that they want that type of love when they be like, Man, when y'all niggas coming up here, son, fuck yeah, yeah. You know, it's a little different way that they ask, but you see that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Bum ass nigga, yeah, we, love ass nigga we love too. niggas, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> fuck is up with you niggas, nigga. Like, yeah. but the fact that we've been able to curate in a, a platform that people can see like, man, I want some of that shit where I'm at, nigga. Don't yeah. make it so difficult. Don't make me have to fly to wherever, man. Bring that shit here. And when we get came and did the King's Theater in New York and yeah. or we go to Philly and we go to these places, it looks the same because those people that are there, right. everybody from the South, for real, no matter where you're from, yeah. if you're black, yeah. but when you come, you want that love too and where you from because nine times out of ten, if you're from a major metropolis like this, it's, it's real hard for you to find, especially in the way we offering it. Yeah. Well, I think the next level, man, before y'all don't do no deal before we do an independent movie. Oh, that's next. I done told y'all. We doing it now. Whatever. We got yeah. to Y'all do doing an independent. Y'all got to do a one independent yeah. movie on y'all own. Oh, yeah. And it's coming up. It's coming up. Yeah, like, it's it right now. It's in, it's in production, bro. Yeah. We going and then you going to be in it. We're going to make you the old Charlemagne versus the new Charlemagne. <laughs> We're going to get the makeup and put your old face on your new face. 
and make you fight to get your new face back. <laughs> <laughs> make you fight to get your new face <laughs> you back. Fight to get your new face back. You know what I mean? Old face versus new face, Charlotte. Who, who he got to fight? Himself. <laughs> Nah, yeah. what about the nigga that was down still waiting on him? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nah, he already We already found them niggas. We just gonna find two niggas. You gonna find two niggas. You gotta... You gotta you know, all you gonna hear is, can I get a drop? That nigga gonna turn around. Oh, 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 you man. still want a drop? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I said the last thing y'all gotta do is one independent movie, man. I've been talking to, y'all about you, talking to you about this for years. One indie movie. Well, I, I would be happy to inform you that we are one-fourth done with the independent movie. Okay. The okay. script is being written out right now. I think we got a classic on our hands. Very funny. Hey, Very hilarious. I got whatever on the investor. Oh, whatever? Say less. Well, I got a budget, but it's whatever. Yeah, oh, don't switch it up <laughs> now, man. Whatever budget. You want me to write it down? So we can yeah, add, 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 add the cart crash. Yeah, exactly. You remember something about the explosions? We're going to get his old skin back. That's what he got the budget. We're going to get his old face <laughs> back and make him put that on. And you're going to be like Zordon off the Power Rangers. You're going to be like who we got to talk to to get our missions for whatever we're doing in the movie. No, I'm investing that with you I believe you got it, bro. Your, your, your family is very successful these days. No, man. Proud of you, though, Thank Slim. You, man. We no just, I remember no when you didn't have all that, too. You know, you were still in a better position than we was, and you still used the position you was in to help us. So, but man, you, it's but always you know salute to Charlamagne. You changed, though. Evolved. He changed for the better or good. I mean, I mean, of course, evolved, but it's like change for the better because you want to be better. That's right. Of course, you still do you and you get on people's nerves, but I don't think people look at it as like, oh, man, this motherfucker just get up on our skin, bro. You bro, really people like. People don't have no idea what you really do. They really think they really think you just own this fucking nah, perfect club. Man, it's one of they don't know how though. fucking deep you are in these right. streets. Man, and you do a great job of keeping them keeping off your trip. Yeah. And I think you should use that same discretion with us when you keep talking about <laughs> money and shit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that nigga. This nigga, man. Yo. Oh, 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 I, oh, yeah, Chico. Y'all yeah, doing big things. So, you doing big things, motherfucker. I'm looking at your splinters. You're looking at the diamonds, man. Life treating you good, huh? <laughs> Fuck you, nigga. <laughs> Y'all boys don't even like money no more. You don't want to eat food on the yacht. Been giving us opportunities. Opportunities for years. You act like I got the money, nigga. You got the nah, money. You got the paper because we was at the chop house and they brought the bill. I was like, man, call Charlemagne. <laughs> Everybody got their own show in the same building. That's how good y'all niggas Y'all doing great over oh, here, man. man. We're doing all right. Like see what I'm saying? Nah, nah, there it is. There it is. You can be doing all right, but we got. Oh, so I know you niggas rich now. Oh, oh yeah. That's how I know you niggas is getting money, baby. Where, well, baby, where's the caveat? Baby, where's the champagne? So, what about you, TV shows and producing? Are you are you big on that? Or yeah, you, yeah, yeah, he done been okay. doing it. Uncommon sense yeah. is uh is uh is is the is the comedy is is it done? Oh no, they canceled that. They canceled it. Yeah, uh, the writer strike and oh yeah, that's and right. All that other shit. Yeah. 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 They cancel Uncommon do Sense, uh, or you can pick it back up and do what no, you want to do. Uncommon Sense was um that MTV two ended as a network, so yeah. they weren't doing God's no more uh, true programming. Uh, yeah, the the, the the last one I had, the God's Honest Truth, the writer strike. We talked about this off the uh. Like on the phone before, but what's your thoughts on ownership and equity splits and how they how they should go as you invest and you think, partner? I think strategic partnerships are the, are, the, are the way to scale. I think that you know companies like y'all are doing it exactly right. Like mm-hmm. you know when to go do strategic partnerships and you know when to keep things a hundred percent y'all own. You know I think that these people out here that's just screaming a hundred percent ownership of everything that's just ridiculous and short sighted. There's nobody. There's no company that does that. There's no corporation in the world right. that does that. Everybody partners with somebody in order to get the scale. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So, so partnership, when I'm gonna break it down though, when you say partnership, right. that don't mean you buy equity into the company. Now you you are a part owner of the company. You partner with partner with the yeah. company. Absolutely. Like John catches and stuff. hundred percent. But that, but see, like y'all, right? Y'all own a hundred percent of things. If y'all partnered with somebody and gave them 10%, if they're bringing an infrastructure that's a multi-million dollar infrastructure or a billion dollar infrastructure and they can take 85 South from We can us. partner with them, but you'll never get 10% but, of what we already started because what, now what? we technically, because on the contractual side, we have to bring you in in order for a degree. And if you say no, we cannot oh, go no, through no, no, with no, it. No, 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 no. If, if y'all, as long as y'all got the power right. and the creative control right. and y'all still call the shots and I'm I'm just over here as an equity investor, right now. Cause I mean, what, if, what if this yeah. infrastructure can take y'all from a ten million dollar company to a two hundred million dollar company? Now, now y'all busting up two hundred million dollar numbers. Hypothetical, uh, hypothetical, uh, hypothetical. <laughs> you can partner with, but that's what I'm saying. Now yeah, y'all busting I mean, up two hundred, three hundred million. Yeah, as opposed well, to twenty. I'm just trying to that. bust up whatever the fuck they gave you over there at that network for canceling that show, nigga. God damn! I'm gonna show you because you, my man. I'm gonna show you. 
I'm gonna show you. Why you ain't showing me? I'm gonna show all of y'all. Oh, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. He said, I'm gonna show you. No, no, no. <laughs> you see how you do me? I just you. wait for y'all no, to pick that up. I'm gonna show you what you ain't get. Information is you. important. That's why I wanted to have y'all on. Oh, yeah. Just I'll have y'all right. talk about the business of 85 because right. I hear so many people talk about what y'all are doing, right. Right. but I've never heard y'all. You know, break it down publicly. I right. talk to y'all as individuals. I mean, we don't like to talk business. Yeah. Like, we talk business, but we don't like to talk. I get it. I get it. I, I feel like we got to say some people that we. Well, I want to do some business with Def Jam and Monster, and I want to get with Johnson and Johnson and come out with my own cocoa butter. Hmm. That can happen. Soft yeah. elbows. No, you I'm already writing a the book and the, 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 the fashion people, you man. The, 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 I'm telling you, man. Them and them motherfuckers. Oh, I'm telling you. These, I need to the, work with the fashion good folks industry. At Chevrolet. Stop playing with right. me, man. You want to do a book, Chico? Yeah, I'm going to write a book. The book, the book and write. You know, I got a book imprint. Yeah. You got a book imprint? Yeah, I get privileged publishing with Shaman and Schuster. Shaman and Schuster? You got a Shaman and Schuster? All right, yeah. I'm going to holler at you, too. I put calls on email with them. He ain't even replied back. I'm on my fourth page. I got, I still have my I'm on my fourth page. Of your book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you should do a children's book. Shit, take time. Why do, nigga, I'm trying to get deep and you going to send me straight to the kids. <laughs> no, I said, I'm on my fourth page. Ah, you need to do a children's no. book. No. And <laughs> here we go with DC flow. Hey, kids. A means you ugly ass little boy. Hey, <laughs> B oh, means you. That's a hit. A <laughs> means you ugly ass little boy. Yes. <laughs> Hey, it can be about self-confidence. Means you ugly little boy. <laughs> okay, now, B. <laughs> means you a palm man, little boy. Okay, now, C. <laughs> means. Yeah, that actually is a good idea. Come now on, I think man. About Come on, That's man. That's crazy. Hold Listen. on. So, hold on. One of these shows is bringing up, uh, what is, and it's called a Teenage Crackhead. Yeah, I think that's just on your TV, nigga. No, and you know, I ain't, I think bro. Crack doing a show called Crack Babies or something like that. She's doing oh, a cartoon right. called Crack it's Babies. It's some shit called Teenage Crackhead or some shit. And teenage they like Teenage I'm talking about they green like that shit. I'm like, what if we would have came out with a Teenage Crackhead? We would have been talked about for the <laughs> Yeah, you guys are too close to the crack for us to accept it. Man, <laughs> yeah, Listen, all the way. It's the 85 South Show, y'all. Make sure y'all uh, go download the Channel 85 app. Please. Subscribe yeah. to all 85 South Show content. Make sure y'all watch the Netflix. Ghetto Legends on Netflix. Yes, sir. <laughs> Make sure y'all subscribe to the 85 South Show podcast on the Black Effect Podcast yeah. Network, man. Y'all brothers just keep growing, man. Thank, oh, thank you, man. man. Go thank to, you, uh, thank uh, you. Appreciate you for everything, bro. We yeah. got some New threads, some I got new on some fabrics, merch right now. Yeah. some new merchandise. We dropping gym shorts. We dropping uh, baby clothes. We dropping Tyler clothes. We got yeah. We got a women. dope ass onesie. We got candles. Got, uh, yeah, we got a, we got a onesie for the got, baby. Uh, My boy with the then, snaps in the middle. Damn, we not Wait, playing. Speaking of people, y'all want to do business with whoever has a licensing for Negro League baseball. I want to get in touch with them. Facts. You can get in touch with the good folks over there, uh, Mitchell and Ness. They can. That's who it is. Yeah. Whoever has a license to make this stuff, uh, our company should be making this stuff. Oh, I got a you. A black company should be making Negro League baseball license. Mitchell and Ness make my um, black effect hats. For real? Absolutely. Oh, I'm going to be to good folks we in Michigan. We can produce and, and manufacture. I love them. Bro, they gave me so much shit yeah, for my yeah, birthday. Yeah, yeah, All the way. That's love, man. Trent, I'm going to connect y'all. With, I'm going to connect you with the 85 South Show, man. We hey, you know who else? You talk to... Uh, you know, I'm talking too much. I'll tell we'll you. Talk right. yeah, we'll talk offline. We'll talk offline. It's the 85 South Show. Yeah, appreciate you. My Real God. idiots. Peace.